Let's talk about the concept of break-even analysis. Firms are interested in break-even analysis, which is sometimes referred to as cost, volume, profit analysis, for a couple of reasons. Well, they'd like to determine the level of operations necessary to cover all their costs, right? If they can't sell that level, then they're going to be losing money and therefore they don't want to undertake the project. There's another reason they're interested in doing it. They'd like to evaluate the profitability at various levels of sales. So how do we go through that? Well, let's define a few terms here. P is going to be equal to the price, price of the um, good that they're selling. Q is the quantity. FC is going to be the fixed cost. Fixed costs are costs that the company is going to incur no matter how much they produce. So if, even if they don't produce anything, they're going to incur these costs. So for example, rent on a building would be a fixed cost. You rent the building, you've signed a lease for a year, you're stuck paying for this even if you don't produce anything. And then the last one is variable cost. Variable cost are costs that vary with the amount of output. Things like labor, raw material. The more you produce, the more it's going to cost you. So let's take a look here at, for example, earnings before interest and taxes. Earnings before interest and taxes, or EBIT, is going to be equal to revenues minus cost. And the revenues are going to be P times Q, price times quantity, right? How much you sell times the price you sell it for, minus the fixed cost, minus the variable cost. And the variable cost will be the variable cost times the quantity, that is, the the actual variable cost you incur, or the variable cost per unit times the number of units you produce. So if we rearrange terms a little bit, we can get this. We can put the Q, we can put the P times Q and the VC times Q together and then factor out the Q. So we get Q times P minus VC minus FC. Well, what are we interested in? We're interested in the place where earnings before interest in taxes equals zero. So we can set this equal to zero. We can bring the fixed cost over to one side and we can um, rearrange terms a little bit. So here we'll do this. Let me do the algebra for you. Fixed cost equals Q times P minus VC. Okay. Divide both sides by P minus VC, and then I'll just I'll just uh, um, put the Q on the left side of the equation. So it's going to be fixed cost divided by P minus VC. So that's our break-even calculation. That is, how much do we have to produce? in order to in order to um, break even use this equation well how much are our fixed costs if you think about it right if fixed costs are a hundred and you're making a dollar profit so you're selling it for two dollars it's costing you a dollar per unit what's what's going to happen you're going to have to sell a hundred units to break even so let's look at a quick numerical example Suppose the costs are, the fixed costs are, let's say, 2500 And let's say that the price is equal to $10. And the variable cost, the cost, variable cost per unit, is going to be equal to $5. We can just plug into that equation to see what break-even is. 
So fixed costs are 2,500. Price is 10, variable cost is five. So we have 2,500 divided by five. And so we get 500 units. So you're gonna to need to sell 500 units in order to break even. All right, let's take a look at this on a spreadsheet so that we can take a, a graph, make a graphical representation of this. So here I've created this spreadsheet where the fixed costs are 100,000, the variable costs are $10 per unit, and the price is $30 per unit. And over here, I've created some some different quantities, 0, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, etc. In this column, I have the fixed cost, which are the same no matter how much we produce. They're always 100,000. Over here, I have sales revenue, which is going to be P price times Q. So in this case, B3 times a9. And then when you copy it down, it will be, you notice I put a dollar sign in to lock this cell so that the P doesn't change. And so then price times what's an A10, etc., etc. So you can see that, you know, in the first, in uh, when we don't produce anything, we have no sales revenue. When we produce 1,000, we have 30,000 because we sell 1,000 units at $30 a unit, etc. The operating costs are going to be equal to the variable cost plus the fixed cost. So I have the fixed costs here that are in B9 plus the variable cost per unit times the number of units. Okay, so B2 times A9 and then B2 times A10, etc. So let's take a look at a little graph of this. In fact, tell you what, let me let me do um, Let's look at the, the operating profit. So the operating profit is going to be equal to the sales revenue minus the cost. So it's going to be C9 minus D9. And let's just copy that down. And we can see that the break-even point here occurs at 5,000 units. That's the place where we're making enough money to cover both the variable cost and the fixed cost. Okay, perhaps more interesting, or at least equally interesting, is a graphical representation of this. So I'm, I'm just going to plot the first uh, four columns here. So we're going to look at revenue. We're going to look at costs, we're going to look at fixed costs, we're going to look at quantity. And so I go up here to insert, I choose a scatter diagram, and I want one that crosses. And look what I get. You can see that this red line is revenue. You can see that it's, it's a, a straight line and it has a slope of 1. Because for every, um, for every additional unit we produce, we make $30 you can see that there's a straight line here for um, for the operating cost okay which is going to be equal to the fixed cost plus the variable cost I didn't plot variable cost separately and you can see that they cross at 5,000 what's nice about doing this kind of analysis well if you're a business you look and you say, well, look, if we're 90% sure that we're going to sell at least 5,000 units, we're in pretty good shape. Okay? If we think that there's only a 20% chance that we'll sell at least 5,000 units, this is probably not a good idea. So this gives us an idea, this gives the business a chance to say, you're always going to take some risk. Even if you project 20,000 in sales, there's always some small chance that you're going to have you know, less than 5,000 in sales, but by looking at this, you say, look, we're projecting 20,000 in sales. We feel pretty comfortable that we will be breaking even. 
you can also use this to adjust things. Suppose variable costs are a little bit higher. Suppose they're, they're $12 instead of $10. Let's see what happens. Notice how this curve shifted a little bit and the break even, we don't have it quite here, but it's someplace between five and 6,000 units. Okay, maybe it goes up to $15. Well, now the break even is between six and 7,000. And you can see that on the graph. Notice how this graph part is getting steeper and the, the point has moved over to the right. All right, let's go back to our original $10 variable cost. And notice how that shifted down. Suppose we're able to raise price. Suppose, oh, suppose we can't sell it for as much as we thought. We have to sell it for $20. What happens? Well, break even is now 10,000. And you can see that this, this curve, the green curve, stayed the same. The cost curve stayed the same. But the revenue curve shifted down. So you're going to get um, an interesting representation here. It gives you a chance to look at some different scenarios to see, you know, where are we if we're able to charge a lower price, a higher price, um, what's break even going to be. So this is a, an incredibly useful analysis uh, when you're looking at a project.